Yeah, I like that because now we're having a real conversation. We're not denying that we're giving up something, right? We are, there's always something that we give up. Same with our clients. They get very perturbed sometimes or concerned as to how to manage the many things that they were used to and take on something new. Yeah. And they they're almost in denial around in order for me to make space for something new, I need to give up something. Yeah. Welcome to our last webinar of 20, what year is it? 2021? Yeah, let's go with that. Um, 2021. It's going to be a good one because it's with Cindy and a bonus with Ujual. So you get two masters for the price of one today. Um, and it's a continuation uh, slash expansion slash, I don't know what else, awesomeization of the hero's journey webinar that we started with a week ago. So those of you who were here last week, same topic, but don't worry, much more depth and even more interesting because we have two masters today. And also they're going to leave this year with a bang. So it's going to be a good one. And uh, coincidentally, it's also your last opportunity to get that one last CCE credit for those of you who are renewing your credentials. But those of you who forgot maybe that you have to renew your credentials, that's okay. Deep breaths. Uh, ICF isn't that strict. They do have um, a small penalty, but they do allow late renewals. So if you are panicking right now because you have not renewed, no worries. Email us, support at Kocharia, Magda at Kocharia, all those great things. And um, we'll let you know what are the different options for you to get your CCE units as quickly as possible in January so that you can apply for your renewal. And I believe the 28th of February is your absolute latest date to renew without lapsing your credential. So even if you miss that deadline, not the end of the world, but you really should renew before the deadline. So um, yeah, contact us if you need help with that. And even if you did not miss the deadline, maybe your renewal is next year. Get a head start so that we aren't having this conversation in a year. <laughs> so lots of opportunities to do uh, free and paid options for CCE with Kotaria. So please take advantage of those. The other little announcement I'll make is that we opened up a little tiny online store. It's going to have more stuff in it, but it's going to be all obviously around this wonderful world of coaching and learning that we all know and love. And um, to start with, it's you know, the ebooks and things that we have at Kocharia, but we know our community is much bigger than just the stuff that we write and produce. So if you're an author and you want to sell your book, for example, on Kocharia's website, email us, support at or magda at kocharia.com. If you do any special cool thing that you sell online, maybe it's a workshop, I don't know. Um, can't promise we'll automatically put that one on there because there's, you know, accreditation and other things to deal with, but, you know, happy to expand our offering both through the shop as well as through our online learning platform. So I think it'd be really cool if in the new year, lots of you end up wanting to collaborate because everything that we will do together, there's obviously feature. So, you know, we're, you're a business, we're a business, don't worry. But I think it'd be really cool if more of our alumni, especially were featured in things like our shop. So yeah, if you have workshops, books, et cetera, that you already are uh, selling or wanting to sell online, please get in touch with us because we have the infrastructure to support you and to support coaching and learning together. Um, I think that's it. Oh yeah, one more thing. You will most, no, you will 100% get an email. Uh, you get many emails from us, but you'll get an email from me about the webinar. It's going to say something like, attention, 
different Zoom link or something along those very obvious lines. But from the new year, we're going to combine the various webinar series because a lot of people miss them because they get confused because we have multiple links, etc. Long story short, the webinar offering at Cocharia has grown and will continue to grow. And to make life easier for everybody, we are going to have it all on one Zoom link. And um, we'll have a process to you know, get everyone notified of what the topic is for that particular week. So just look out for that email uh, next week and then a reminder again in January, um, because if you don't look for it, you might show up to this webinar next year and it's not here. And you'll be like, what happened? This happened. Okay, I am done and out and off to you Ujwal and Cindy for our last webinar of the year. And to everyone who I will not talk to and see, happy new year, happy Christmas, happy everything else you're celebrating. Um, and thanks for being here. It's been lovely. Thank you, Marta. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, wonderful to be with you on the last webinar for the year. Can you believe that, Woodrow? The year has come to an end. We had the last Masters in Coaching webinar. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. And today, Wajul and I are going to partner with you as we evoke and explore a tool that we started with or a model that we started with last week and continuing this week, Hero's Journey. Um, Marta's put up a um, structure or a little model, uh, an image form into the chat. We're going to make reference to that and we're going to make reference to the growth path, the inner growth a person goes through on hero's journey. I'm not going to pick up too much of what we discovered, or what we chatted about last week or discussed. But just a place with you, last week was a more beginner framework. So you can check that webinar out um, whenever you have some time. But we went through it like a beginner coach word and how that coach would use Eros journey to coach clients. A dual approach for coach and for client. And today we're gonna to more deep dive into the same process but into the various steps of the journey. And with the dual approach again, you know, the external journey the person takes or the hero takes or you take and the inner journey, what happens inside and how that impacts the external journey. So today we're celebrating you, us, our clients, as heroes in our own journey. It's been a difficult year for many this year. And you may have had challenges, issues, problems, wins, successes, accomplishments. And in all that, you may have discovered some things about yourself, your moments of change or strengths, capabilities, uniqueness, that you never thought you had. Or you may still be, you know, thinking about it like, really, I did that? I went through that this year? Well, let's deep dive into it today and embrace that you know in you. And of course, talk more about a bit later on how do we coach clients, our clients around Eros journey. Which will? Anything you want to say about Hero's journey to start? Sure. <clears throat> Thank you, Cindy. And hi, everyone. It's absolutely a pleasure to be with you today. And uh, it's an honor to be with uh, my mentor, Cindy, and uh, with all of you. Feeling great. So, yeah, as most of you will be aware about uh, the Hero's journey, Joseph Campbell uh, studied mythology all across the world and he found some common themes that how a hero's journey 
uh, appears. So Cindy, with your permission, uh, although we have shared that resource in the chat box, is that okay for me to share the screen so that uh, you can give that bit yeah. of a reference to context and then yes. we can dive into the inner journey because we are talking about mastery and mastery outside can only be achieved when the mastery is achieved inside. So Cindy and I, with major contribution from Cindy and whatever I can contribute because whatever I am today is because of Ram and Cindy. So absolutely uh, feeling great about talking about our favorite topic, which I was introduced by Cindy and Ram a few years ago, that is a hero's journey. Okay, so just allow me a moment while I share the screen. Yeah, is this is this visible to everyone? Cindy, is this visible to you as well? Okay. Oh, yes, so, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. great, great. Okay, so Cindy, would you like to go about explaining the steps a little bit, or would you like me to do that quickly? No, no, go, go ahead. Um, sure. We'll run through it in a way that just as a refresher to last week's webinar. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And Ujo, we may stop along the way, right? And let's you and I engage in a more in depth discussion as absolutely. we go along. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah? Yeah, and, and to I, everybody I, on the call, please dive in. Put your comments into the chat box. Yes. Um, this is about more about you than it is about us discussing it. Yeah. Yes. Go, go absolutely. Ahead with yeah. Thank you, Cindy. And in a minute, I will just go over these steps. And uh, as you have rightly said, this program, this session is more about the conversation, and also I would like to pick up on that word conversation because various steps to mastery cannot be achieved till the time the hero gets into a conversation with himself or people around him or with some supernatural powers that he's likely to get. But ultimately, it's the conversations that lead hero to the hero's journey and achieving mastery. Okay, so so those of you who are very familiar with it, uh, uh, I I wouldn't take much of your time. And those of you who are new to this concept, uh, it's an invitation to uh, go and look up for yourself on how the wonderful this uh, stages are, hero's journey. Somewhere some call it twelve steps, some call it seventeen steps. But irrespective of that, when a hero is getting a call to adventure then he goes through various uh, systems, various stages. Sometimes there is because of inner doubt, he may refuse the call to adventure, but then he meets um, he or she, so I want to be gender neutral. So the hero meets with the supernatural powers or mentor or somebody comes to rescue. And then he moves from the known sphere to unknown sphere. And that is where he or she crosses the threshold. And that is where the transformation begins. And then the situation goes through, um, there is a process of almost like a death and rebirth kind of a stuff. Then hero goes through the transformation. And then ultimately they return to the glory with sword of honor, with double mastery and stuff like that. So this image itself is uh, not sufficient enough to understand the magnanimity of work done by Joseph Campbell, but I would invite everyone to like, as, as at Kocharya, we are super fans of uh, Joseph Campbell as well as Carl Rogers. So uh, remembering both the maestros and inviting you to go on your own journey to learn about uh, Joseph Campbell and hero's journey. Okay, so, but today as I spoke, uh, uh, and Cindy also mentioned that it's all about the inner journey and uh, through our conversations between Cindy and myself and between all of us, uh, we will see how best we can facilitate the journey for ourselves and also for our clients. Because uh, I have been telling that uh, mastery 
is not to be achieved it is to be allowed because each and every one of you has master coach already sitting inside of you and it's just about enabling that master coach or allowing that master coach to come to the fore and take charge and uh, then how do you facilitate that in your journey of achieving mastery for your clients so that is the core uh, objective that we wish to achieve at the end of the session am i right cindy absolutely spot on i like that word sure thank you so i'll stop the screen share and uh, we can leave it, on, leave it on for a minute leave it oh, on okay. Ujo for a minute yeah sure sure I want to engage everybody in a question. When you became a coach, those of you on, on the call that are coaches and those of, of you that are not, think about a transition like making a job change or a career change or taking a big step into doing something different like a project or whatever it is you've done. But those of you that are coaches, in making that decision to become a coach or to start coaching, how long did you take? Put your answers into the chat box. How long did you take to make that decision? Meaning when you, the first thought, when you had it, and when you start from that time until you started training, how long did you take? Yeah, one year. Two to three years, eight months. Okay, almost no time. Wonderful. Immediately, yeah, several years, Mark. Yeah. So many of us were like that, right? The journey took some time. The call to adventure or the call to something new took some time. And for others, it may have been an immediate call, like I dive right into it. So the, the, the point here is that it doesn't, there's no limitations to how long it takes for us and for clients. Sometimes we'll find somebody answering their call or their inner calling immediately, and sometimes it'll take a long time. And for those that it took a fair amount of time, I'm sure you went through many, I need to do more research, I need to talk to so-and-so, Yes, no, I think I want to do it. I can't get it out of my mind. So maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. It was all this uncertainty, which is a part of a process. And then you take the call. You take the call to embark on something. Now, in that call, the first, you know, the first piece here, call to adventure. Oh, my fingers are not showing on the screen. Um, the call to adventure is not an easy journey. And I'm paying attention to this because neither is it so for our clients. And this, this takes quite some time with clients. When they come and they sit there with you and you ask them what is it they want from coaching today, they tell you a narrative and the narrative will have a lot of uncertainties in it. And you will find that there is an awareness. The client has an awareness they want something. But in that awareness, there may be some limitations. Some things are limited, meaning some things are known. And then you know the part here that says unknown. As they move along, they move into the unknown part. And maybe that's better explained with iceberg model, what lies below the surface. Joari's window, what are knowns, what are unknowns. These are models and tools you could use to work with clients around the first part, their call to adventure. Yep. Udo, you want to pick anything up there that I could have missed? No, absolutely, Cindy. And a lot there talks to competency three, right? 
maintaining yeah. agreements, uh, establishing and maintaining agreements. And you can see the essence of 3.3 and 3.4, meaning what is meaningful or important to the client in this quest they are, in this goal they want to set. And 3.4, what does this client want to address or getting in the way or obstacles? Yeah, you're having a broader conversation there that moves from what's known, what's limited awareness into now unknown awareness or new awareness showing up. Would you, I'm gonna stop talking then, you continue. Okay, uh, would you like this to be continued on the screen, uh, Cindy? Or that um, inner journey slide, I should bring it? Yeah, let's, let's look at the inner journey slide. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah, most welcome. Is this visible? So coaches, I have another oh, participants. I have another question. Thank you, Joe. I have another question for you. In taking that, that journey, in taking, um, in heeding to that call or allowing the call and diving into it, right? What did you have to give up? What did you give up? You may have to give up some things, you know, like time, some family life, um, leisure time. What did you give up? Ah, oh, lovely comfort zone. Mm. And was it easy or difficult to let go? Please type, type your responses to everyone so everyone can see it. Some of you are only typing host and panelists, which means only Ujwal and I will see that. So those of you that have done that, retype your answers in. Yeah, and select everyone. Select everyone, yeah, comfort. Absolutely right. Time, comfort, career break, giving up the comfort. I've heard so many coaches, I don't know about you as well. I've heard so many coaches say, you know, my, my family time is so limited now because I have to do all these assignments and my yes. recordings and evidencing. And yes. Yes, you've heard that repeatedly, right? Yeah. One of the... So the call to adventure, the call to adventure as some kind of a detachment from what you were always comfortable and known to you into something more. You're stepping into something more. Yeah. Hmm. Cindy, one of the coaches told me that uh, I'm so much getting myself immersed into coaching. So my family is so much worried that I have almost forgotten them, so they may take me for counseling. So, <laughs> yeah. I remember at one time my children said, Mom, you are so full of appointment appointments. Should we also make an appointment with you? <laughs> but yes. they grown up children, so I saw the humor in that and didn't take that to art. <laughs> yes, correct. Yeah, wonderful. Love all your answers because that's exactly the reality of it is that we, we, we give up something to take the call or to eat to the call inside us for adventure or for something new. And on your screen, you are seeing this inner world of hero's journey, awareness of something. And you know, what are you overcoming? And you can see some words there around fear, resistance. Um, resistance could have many layers, even resistance to the success of it. Right, Ujo? Yeah. Some absolutely. people have beliefs around success. Yeah. Yeah. Or, I know yeah, you're the absolutely. expert in beliefs. Yeah. 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 Correct. Yeah, I like that because now we're having a real conversation. We're not denying that we're giving up something, right? 
we are, there's always something that we give up. Same with our clients. They get very perturbed sometimes or concerned as to how to manage the many things that they were used to and take on something new. Yeah. And they, they almost in denial around, in order for me to make space for something new, I need to give up something. Yeah. And uh, Cindy, at this juncture, if I may share uh, one of the stuff that I generally get with people who are at a foundation level. So, so coaching is, uh, is, is a process of structured conversation, right? And uh, we at Kucharya, we believe that uh, we, we don't see marker as an obstacle, but we see markers as an enabler, enabler. Competencies as one of the tools to achieve mastery, right? So, so when, 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 they, when they have to change themselves in order to have a structured conversation, so I, I also see that many coaches go through the resistance of change. And uh, so I, I tell them that, what is the difference between a coffee table conversation and a coaching conversation? So, and that's where they, they need to put themselves into a bit of a structure, at least an organized approach to coaching. And then uh, once they immerse into it, they go forward. But yeah, I see that uh, two and three playing very prominently in the beginning of the journey. And also sometimes because it's so inspiring, coaching is quite an inspiring process. Yeah. Sometimes there's a sense of guilt that you know we're in the um, in the space of being inspired and happy and joyful that we're coaching and doing something contributory that's you know in the space of our purpose having meaningfulness yeah. to us we have a sense of guilt or whatever yeah. other feelings associated with that and um, want to do too much or take on too much too much um, yeah. in this call to adventure yeah okay so that's the first part one, two, three, and four. What are we, how are we walking this journey of this call to adventure for ourselves and our clients? You know, coaches, participants, may I encourage at this point, you think about the journey that you took that we spoke about in the beginning of this conversation. And as Eros journey is a framework it's a framework, a structure, putting together many pieces in a very broad space of how an hero takes the journey to complete transformation. May I encourage you to put down notes for yourself on creating your own framework on the journey you took. That will help you create some tool for yourself or a resource for yourself. We'll talk a bit more about resources and tools later. For now, what will, should we deep dive into five, six, and seven? Yeah, absolutely, Cindy. Okay, so uh, you, what, do, what would you like to? So yeah, so so I I also see uh, one more framework is coming to my mind, which is uh, somewhere related. Uh, can I share, Cindy? Oh, of course. So so one of in in I mean many years ago uh, we were studying uh, change management, and uh, at that time somebody showed us that tool that uh, there are four stages of change, and the first stage is denial, second is resistance. Third is a tentative exploration, and fourth is commitment to change. So I, I see it's somewhere also getting resonated here. So I just thought to bring up for everybody. But once uh, you know, so I, I would I would go for uh, connect. Uh, I would go and connect four and five. So once somebody overcomes the fear, okay which in neuroscience, what we call it aha moment, that happens. Once they overcome the fear, which means that 
there is a courage which is taking over. And with that new energy, with that new awareness, there are some new connections happening in the brain. And as a part of that, the energy is released and committing to change. That is the stuff that happens. So I want to ask you, and unfortunately, I'm not able to see the see, see each and every chat, but Cindy, in case uh, you, you can perhaps uh, uh, say what comes up in the chat box. So in your own coaching, okay, uh, and I'm now I'm addressing you as a coach. So in, if you are in a coaching session, how do you come to know what are the signs that will tell you that now client is overcoming the fear and looks like he or she is committing to change. What are those verbal, non-verbal cues which will tell you that they have crossed that threshold? That's a lovely question. Thank you. Yeah, so how do we know, right? How would we yeah. know? Because I find that sometimes in coaching, we ask clients, what are you learning about yourself? And there's a blank, yes. you know? Yeah, there's an invitation to the learning question, but there's a blank in client. They haven't reached that point as yet. Yeah. They're still busy exploring within themselves. There's an awareness. They're aware of it. They know it. They can feel it. But they haven't fully, fully gone into the depth of it, right? So it's just um, an awareness, just lying yeah. there as an awareness. So you yeah. know Coach Arya's 3A models, awareness, and the it's not ready to be anchored. So sometimes when we ask that learning question, it's almost like an anchoring, and it's not ready for that part as yet. And we all know that learning sometimes takes a few sessions for in learning to show up. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so it's nice, nice, nice one, Naomi. So it's nice to stay for some time with clients that are exploring what is happening in one, two, three, and four, making reference to the diagram. Before, like, getting the sense of there is this commitment here to change. Then you will notice six, experimenting with new conditions, yes. preparing for the change, and you will notice that you can almost, you can get a sense that it easily relates to evoking awareness. Yeah. Yep. What are yep. we evoking in clients as they continue on their journey? Or what are we help? Let me say that properly. What are we helping clients to evoke in themselves via our questioning or curiosity, inquiries and explorations? What are we helping clients evoke in themselves? Now, in Joseph Campbell's um, Hero's Journey, he talks about these obstacles all along the way. Or, yeah, dragons that stands in front of you and wants to blow out fire at you just when you're ready to take the next step. And some of us at that point will wait it out or work it out, you know, what's going on. There's a challenge or a concern and we work through it. And some of us may find ourselves wanting to turn back. Or getting stuck or a bit feeling a bit disempowered in that space. But it's only a matter of time because we are on a journey. We have taken the call to adventure. And just a question you're playing on my mind, quite a big one, which we ask clients normally 
or most of the time at the end of the session. But this question doesn't need to be at the end. In fact, it has a significance throughout a particular journey in different steps of it. In different steps of it, you will find this question on support and resources emerge repeatedly. And Joseph Campbell talks about mentors and supernatural aids. Of course, normal people like us, we are on an hero's journey. We have people along the way that may be there to support us. It doesn't have to be people, you know, lots of time support, um, resources are natural, meaning, you know, not having a good day and you do a bit of meditation or you take a walk and you feel good. Those are more environmental or natural resources. Which will? Yeah, absolutely. And, and what happens is when somebody is just committed to change, it happens at, an, at, at a level of will, but then finally it needs to be converted into action. And that is the time they would need some tools and resources and uh, support mechanism in order to hardwire that change. Because otherwise, uh, the threat, threat perception of the brain again will take prominence and uh, again bring back some fear, self-doubt and stuff like that. So in order to feel more empowered as the word Cindy has used, uh, one, one would need to be asked and that is where, uh, you know, uh, our question is, uh, core competency uh, in PCC markers 8.5 talks about what support or resources uh, that the client will need in order to, you know, translate some act insights into actions. Because remember, what is mentioned as seven, preparing for major change, that happens till till seven it happens inside the coaching session but the actual actions will be taken after the coaching session so whatever that springboard or strong foundation that you create and uh, client is fully energized fully gear up to uh, take some actions that is why the actions will be undertaken but otherwise client will talk but not take actions. Because again, it's a big change. Our brain likes homeostasis. It likes comfort zone. It doesn't like change in the state. And whenever somebody has used the word comfort zone, so yes, brain loves comfort zone. And as coaches, remember what we have learned from Cindy is that our job is to support the client at all the time, but wherever needed, challenge also in a positive way. So we need to stretch them. We need to challenge them. Uh, that is where I, when we hear many recordings, we find that in action zone, many coaches just let it loose. They, they, they don't ask those specific questions. Client says, I'll take the action next week. So they don't ask, okay, so where, which day next week? When is that day looking like? What will come in the way? What, what, how would you overcome any risks and stuff like that? They, they just feel that now action zone has started. Now my session is over and uh, I hope I'll get my recording clear. So, but it is preparing for major change. So you, 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 every question that you are asking is preparing them for major change. And being a process owner of coaching, it's your responsibility to ensure that client is, you know, coming up to a level from within. And that is why it's more of an inner journey. And who of the client is we should focus on, and not so much on the what of the client. Hmm. Absolutely. I love what you said with Joe, because, you know, 
just pulling from something that you were saying is designing actions is not yes. one question, right? Yeah. It is yeah. a it is a meaningful exploratory conversation. Yes. Because that's a thing you're checking on next week when you meet or in two weeks' time when you meet, right? Yeah. yeah. How did this action go? There's got to be commitment. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be, I'm going to use this word of Euro's journey, it's got to be aligned to the call to adventure or the goal yeah. of the session, right? Yeah. There's got to be some alignment or the bigger goal that you're working on. Yeah, absolutely. And action should include more than just the doing. It should also include feeling and yeah. beingness. Like what would it mean for you if you did X, Y, and Z in the next few days? Yeah, yeah. But so much more is happening there. You can you pick up a burst of energy or not, which will tell you the commitment to the action. You get a sense of that. Yeah. The question on resources and support should also be a, quite a like an exploratory conversation, not one word. When the client gives you a particular answer, follow up with that so it becomes um, exploratory. Sorry, not one sentence. One question is an inquiry. When you follow that on, it's an exploration. And yeah. an exploration is more masterful or it's advanced coaching. Yeah, absolutely. So seven point hmm, two, three, four, may, may become a big part of this now, these uh, five, six, and seven that we're talking about, including eight where we look at or we ask questions on current, moving to new thinking, new feeling, new being, new what? The new questions on new situation the client wants to move into. Mm. Yeah. Current to more, expansiveness, goes beyond, goes coach goes beyond current to new or expanded ways of thinking and feeling yeah uh, and Cindy, all that yeah. now put some yeah go ahead Rachel. yeah go, go ahead Cindy. There you go. no you 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 complete i had something come up for okay, me, i was just I'll gonna put it up now I'll just complete my thought and then sure. I'll hand it over to you. Yeah. All that now, now we are like on this journey for something new emerging, right? Because we've asked questions on what's beyond or what's more. The client is thinking more. Now things will begin to emerge as either strengths, uniqueness, new capabilities, new learnings, now that may begin to emerge. Go on, Rachel. Yeah. Thank you. So, so Cindy, I was, I was, uh, uh, I was focusing on this uh, nine step nine, accepting consequences of new life, and that is the time I reminded of Carl Rogers. Okay, what he has mentioned beautifully on this seminal book on becoming a person. So. Uh, and, and I want to tell everybody, including you as a coach and when you are coaching the client, uh, initially, any fear, any resistance, um, client will have towards themselves because they are not able to accept a particular part of their life. And that's why they are having a dilemma. And with that dilemma, when they come to you, so they are in, in conflict with themselves. It's an inner conflict which is bothering them. Hence, they want to come to you. Now, as, as a coach, uh, so where Dr. Carl Rogers talks about unconditional positive regard and empathy and congruence and stuff like that. So one of the things that he has mentioned beautifully that 
till the time they accept themselves as is the process of change will not begin but initially they will have a difficulty of accepting themselves as it is as they are because they have a conflict with some parts of their their selves at that time if you accept them fully unconditionally as they are whatever broken condition that they have brought themselves to you if you accept them and if you believe that they are capable whole and uh, totally in a position to reach where they want to reach they will just accept themselves because you have accepted them as they are so so accepting consequences of new life is not easy and that is one of the biggest part of inner work that anybody would need to do so at that time you as a coach if you if you help ex by accepting them unconditionally they will eventually accept themselves yeah absolutely absolutely you know Ujwal, it reminds me i say to many coaches when they start coaching or they on a coaching journey mm. we we'll talk about you know then they would go i can't do that and i don't know how to do that and you know you get all these barriers that they created for themselves yeah oh yeah i remind them that they didn't come to coaching as a blank slate yeah they came with a lot of skills that are considered people skills meaning they were really good at listening they were they showed a lot of empathy and they may have got comments around that from friends family colleagues you know it's so good to listen it's so good talking to you you listen so well yeah so oh, i feel great whenever i'm in your space so you're not a blank slate there are many things wonderful unique about you that you should carry throughout your coaching journey and if you came with really good listening skills you entered the coaching journey or your call with really good listening skills as an example Yeah. Now, what you're doing is enhancing it and making it better and better to mastery. Yeah. But you're not a blank canvas. You already have a lot of wonderful uniqueness, talents, abilities, capabilities, and gifts yes. that you bring. Same with outlines. Exactly that which you said, Ucho. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. So, Cindy, when uh, somebody complimented me about my listening skills, so I said that uh, I give that credit to my wife because I accepted consequences of my new life after my marriage and worked all these years in honing my listening skills, which is one of the secret sources of my happy married life. Oh, Ujjwal, you know. Can you just sometimes take the compliment as you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, coaches, let's pick up the last part of your own journey, the internal journey. So yeah. now there is this 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 kind of um. illumination inside you right because you've discovered something new whether it was a strain talent to take on this new you know you discovered i have the power to slay all these dragons in front of me all your challenges and your concerns that are standing in your way and you emerge you have this new energy and this leads to the pathway of emerging victorious like i have accomplished something and you would celebrate the something i went on a coaching journey for one plus year and became a professionally certified coach and along the way there were many many challenges many times i thought i'd give this up but here i am here i am victorious i've got my pcc certified coach certificate pcc certificate and i'm feeling celebratory about it 
So the journey to the end is a transformation one. Something inside you change. And honestly, you can't be the same as when you started the journey because so much of unknowns have emerged in you and have become now known to you. Absolutely. And Cindy, as uh, they are reflecting on what you have beautifully mentioned, uh, also there are last mile dangers and challenges and uh, one, one would, uh, you know, almost on the verge of, they may feel like giving up because uh, last mile challenges will finally test your metal and uh, then the mastery will be attained. So I, I remember uh, that you advised me to take a break because uh, my, I almost had to do 18 or 19 recordings and I was almost about to give up and then finally, you know, made it. So th those things will come in the way, but that's the final frontier before which the mastery will be attained. Absolutely, absolutely. Like we had, you you would know this, Ujjwal. We have many coaches saying, and I still got to end in some assignments. And I still got to do two more recording. You know, yeah. like, you know, you get the sense that, ah, they're gonna give up. And I go, okay, draw a plan for yourself. You got a few more weeks, draw a plan for yourself and yeah. take it slowly, one tick at a time, one action yes. at a time. So that's that last bit, right? That's absolutely. getting in the way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that is why, Cindy, uh, you know, ICF has so beautifully put up uh, 3.4 and 8.6 because you are asking about uh, what can potentially come in the way or what they need to address with reference to the session outcome. But when we enter into CC8 zone, which is an action zone, that is where also we are asking very obviously, very clearly mentioned that what is it that, what are the potential obstacles that you need to overcome in order to take actions? So ICF is also aware that there could be last mile. So intention to action. So, so, uh, on a lighter note, one of my, uh, you know, potential clients called me and said that, which will I, I, I think I know everything, what I need to do. I also know these are, this is my problem and this is the action that I need to take. Just that I'm unable to take actions. If I may just take actions, I think I'm there. I said, uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, but please don't do that. He said, why are you sorry? I said, if you know, you know you have a problem, you know what actions to take. And if you take actions, and if everybody starts thinking like that, it's a big danger to coaching industry. Because the entire coaching industry majorly thrives on, people know what they need to do, but they are not able to do it. So how do we bridge the knowing doing gap? So please leave some work for coaches so that you know our fires keeps burning and he started laughing and say yeah that's the reason i want to talk to you i said please welcome uh -huh. there we go there was a reason there <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i think which all we have covered eros journey on the internal journey to yeah. support last week's webinar on more a framework you know what is this 12 steps or 17 yes. steps about yeah so coaches when you are listening to Eros journey this webinar or when you're making reference to it make reference to the initial diagram that we will put up because that's the one in our lms or um yeah so it, it'll just deepen your understanding it won't be today's webinar won't be out of context because it's part A and part B. Now, I want to have a more um, um, collegial conversation with you around support and resources. 
I'm sure many of you here are fans of Euro's journey. From your responses, I get a sense that you are. So what are some support and resources you use to help yourself or your client with Euro's journey? Please share it on the chat so we can build up a robust support and resource uh, you know, guide. Whether it's videos, um, PDFs, statements, um, a good link that you have, we'd love for you to share it on the chat. Please do that. And another, another uh, invitation. I'm thinking about next year's Masters in Coaching. And while half of it is going to be live coaching, because I want to ensure that at least 12 is live coaching. Oh, I like that. She, <laughs> Coach Aria is the support. <laughs> Leave Coach Aria out, put another support there. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, next year. Why? I would like at least 12 of the webinars to be live coaching. So you get a good, uh, good um, you know, experience of some live coaching with different master coaches. I would also like to have some robust, deep conversations in between that, panel discussions and more, dialogues and more. So if there's any topic you would like us to unpack, coaching related or organizational related, feel free to pop me an email or send me a message, LinkedIn, um, WhatsApp, LinkedIn. I mean, I know most of you here yeah, have me on WhatsApp. So feel free to send me or oh, a topic and we'll I'll look into that. Lovely morning walks. I hope you draw up a framework for yourself and create some tool for yourself and your own hero's journey. You know, one of the greatest acknowledgements of appreciation we can give to clients is when they start to develop a tool for themselves. And we notice that. And we say, you know, instead of an external, go and read this book or that book, we get to notice, ha, huh, this client is developing their own way of doing things. They are their best resource. Like you notice a client would say, you know, I've got to get up in the morning and do some meditation. And then I would do that. And then I've got to go for a run. Or then I would have, a, so you get a sense of, ha, huh, the person is developing some way to manage maybe work-life balance or whatever it is. So develop for yourself your own tools and your own frameworks in how you are working. As I round up on today's conversation, and before I hand over to Ujjwal to round up, I thank you all this year for joining us and making the Masters in Coaching a wonderfully interactive experiential learning space. Thank you so much. And next year, I look forward to joining you to expand this more. Ujo? Thank you, Cindy. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining in. And I would again connect two masters, uh, Carl Rogers and Joseph Campbell. Carl Rogers also said that everybody is on the journey or in the process of becoming what they want to become. They want to become the best version of themselves. So do not look at them as a product which cannot be recycled, but look at them as a process which can be augmented, enhanced, redesigned, and optimized. So like that, everybody, including you, are on the, on the hero's journey. And ultimately we need to become heroes that we are originally, we are born for. So that's the reason. Do not give up on people, do not give up on yourself and believe that the best version of ourselves lies within. We need to allow, we need not to achieve. Yeah. <laughs>
on that note, wishing everyone a Merry Christmas and great 2022. And we remain connected and uh, loved meeting you today. Look forward to meet you every time. And thank you, Cindy, for allowing this opportunity to be with you today. Thank you. Ujwal, is there any way you could put that uh, uh, diagram up? on the chat you know the one yes. on my on the inner journey yes I, I i did that okay because somebody requested it thank yes, you yes yes I, I i did that sure I'll, I'll do that one more time okay there you go it's on the chat yeah bye everyone bye bye take care Merry christmas to you all and those happy holidays Hope you have a wonderful, restful period. Yeah, thank you.